England was spending millions of pounds in newspapers. Anyway, Fraser Nelson and the Magic Hotel, welcome to you both. Thanks for coming in. Um, Fraser, you've been a columnist for a long time on the news of the world. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's start with you and that final historic edition. Yeah, I've got the very first issue of the News of the World up on my wall at home and it's funny to be holding the very last one here. And I think they've done it brilliantly. They've just shown all these incredible front pages which have kind of punctuated British history actually. When you walk into the News of the World they've got them all up on the wall. And it just reminds you that this is the most successful newspaper the world has ever known. Nobody is, at its peak, it sold 8 million. Nobody's mm. ever done more than that. And it's funny, when newspapers die, normally they run out of readers, run out of money. This is really quite something it, this else. This has never happened before that a proprietor has closed a successful newspaper. No, because there's always the view that you can, you can basically cleanse brands. You can mm. change editor, change ownership, bring them back again. So it just shows how serious that Rupert Murdoch takes this. He sees it, obviously, as a kind of threat to his global empire, and he wants to send a message to everybody in Beijing, etc. If you um, screw up like this, you will pay the price. But nobody can quite believe you know, uh, the commercial audacity. But He's the not fact a sentimental fellow, is he? <laughs> clearly not. Well, clearly not. But it's, the funny thing is, it's difficult, certainly as a journalist, not to be sentimental sure. about... You know, this, this incredible newspaper and all the good that it's done, which mm. is something that nobody will listen to at the moment, such are the scale of the sins of the private investigators. And, you know, for those journalists who were involved in the paper, this is the great irony. All these bad things were done by the men in raincoats, the PIs who were at the end of a phone, who would do all sorts of methods. But, all, but also authorised by the people right at the top, yes. many of whom are still there, and that was unlike a huge, the journalists. Yeah, that was a huge mistake for which the news, newspaper has paid with its life. Amanda? It is, I mean, it is incredible. If, it, if it's true that there's £100,000 that was going to these private investigators every year, I mean, you know, as a former newspaper editor and executive, you don't just... £100 has to go through the books, you yeah. know? It has to be seen by executives at some level. Mm. Who they are, who knows? But it is incredible. And just looking at the front pages, I thought it was quite sweet. Colin Myler, who the editor who mm. I worked with for on and off for 20 years, who is a very fine man and a very honest man. When we couldn't find him on Today newspaper, he'd usually be down at the local Catholic church um, <laughs> saying mass. I mean, he's mm. so clean, that guy. Um, but he's, uh, he's written this lovely um, um, you know, obituary to the papers, guess what you have to call it. And he said, uh, an advertisement for our first ever edition, it announced that the news of the world um, as the novelty of nations and the wonder of the world, as worthy of the mansion as the cottage. And that is incredibly true. I mean, that's one of the things about the news of the world is that so many um, people who are very influential, like, well, read it for choice as well as when they were in it. Well, what jumps out to you when you, they've re reprinted the first page here, it's, it's inside, it? and it gives the mission statement, in, which was exactly the same as it is today. A paper, it says, which will have enough intellectual calibre to engage the rich because they want to know simply mm. by the sheer number it sells amongst the poor. This is the kind of paper they want to be read in Buckingham Palace and down the pub, and it still was. And it was, was. Yeah. and it actually was. What I was struck by, uh, you know, going through it, was um, the, 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 what, there's not a great deal of contrition about the recent events and a sort of sense... I mean, of course it's written for their readers, mm -hmm. but it also seemed to me to be, in a sense, it was written for Rupert Murdoch, saying, look what we've achieved, look of what course. you're killing off, mm -hmm. um, remember us. Yeah, there will be. I mean, just think how high the emotions were running there. These are mm. journalists who had nothing to do with the sins committed. Mm. If you, they spent the last five years, Colin Myler had completely making sure everything was right, and they pay the price for it. So you can mm. imagine the emotions as they were putting yeah. that paper together. Yes. Um, lots of interesting coverage, I'm going to say, I elsewhere in the, in you the have, press of this. You have to give um, Carol Malone, who's the star columnist, she's written her whole... Normally you only get to write about um, the death of a father or a mother in your column. Yeah. This is the first time I've ever read about the death of a newspaper. And she puts it really succinctly here. She says, This red top monolith has been a life force in Britain journalism and love it or hate it. No politician, no crook, no pervert, no celebrity, no corporation has ever been able to ignore it. And, and that mm. was true. And mm. that's why, despite the terrible things that happened and the ghastly things over Millie Downer, the hacking, it, yeah. is, it is a sad day for... for okay. Now, 
I said, um, you said that journalists are sentimental and so journalists are, but also it's a ruthless trade oh, and you can, you can pick that up from some other front pages. Look at this, this is incredible because of course you have suddenly there are, as, uh, you know, there are um, 7 million readers out there who some of them will want another Sunday newspaper. So what does the Daily Star do? Wills to be Beckham's godfather, oh yeah. Um, the people, um, they've got Wills and Kate's, we want three children. So they've got a private interview with them about that. All of them, Cheryl Cole on the front, Sunday Mirror. Don't go back to Cheryl. Cheryl Cole again, big Harry Potter promotion. And what they're all doing is doing that classic red top, um, a celebrity, a bit of royals, and a whacking big offer to try and get the readers in. Well, there are seven million readers up for grabs now. The question is, where will they go? But the funny thing is, in America, when they shut newspapers, the readers have just gone. Yeah, they and don't go anywhere it else. is possible. Our industry is in contraction. It could well be that this is simply accelerating this yeah. one-way reverse. It's You've chosen Andrew, Andrew Gilligan. Yeah, uh, he makes a, a very good point. The, the, the News of the World, you know, for all of its faults, was the premier investigative journalist uh, newspaper in Britain. It simply um, resorted a bit behind it. And what comes after? Is this an opportunity for the politicians to make a power grab, to basically try to muzzle the British press in a way they've always wanted to do? Because yeah. the papers have never been more vulnerable. And um, Gilligan makes the point that this is, um, he's a great investigative journalist, and he was saying that this scandal could, in terms of simply by empowering the regulatory forces, stop journalists asking awkward questions. Well, a lot of people are worried about that, of course, across the trade. Um, let's turn to the politics of all of this. Amanda, the Observer's got an interesting story. I mentioned at the beginning Paddy Ashdown. He has indeed. Um, now, Ashdown, among other people, he's come out saying that he actually warned Cameron about the dangers of hiring Andy Coulson. And, and that um, he rather arrogantly dismissed this. Nick Clegg was also warned and raised it with the Prime Minister and he was just seen off. Um, um, Cameron was just determined to bring him on board. And, and, but you also have this crazy situation at the moment. We've got Ed Miliband on later in the show. And of course his own head of communications, um, Tom Baldwin, there are some very serious allegations about him hacking into a bank account that have to be addressed. Now, so you've right, got this Miliband... Is Michael, this is Michael Ashcroft, this is Michael Ashcroft. the it Conservative was Party, then Treasurer. He was then Treasurer. I was then William Hayes' spin doctor, so I'm very abreast of this story. And there are serious allegations to answer. So you've got Cameron having hired someone who was already shown to be in charge of something that was um, breaking the law. And then you've got Ed Miliband with someone who's which, certainly got questions to which answer. Which raises the whole question about whether politicians have become far too close to this one newspaper group. Oh, well, look, they, um, there's, no, there's no doubt that they slavishly courted, or all political parties did. The only reason the Lib Dems didn't is because Murdoch wouldn't be bothered to see them because they weren't important enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's turn to the other element, uh, Fraser, which is the police. Um, yes, the police. Well, Sunday, got, Telegraph. Sunday Telegraph has got an interview. An astonishing by, interview, actually. That. Yes, exactly. But by, um, by John Yates, he investigated the first time around. Or and didn't he, investigate. <laughs> yeah, and he basically has a mere culpa. It was a huge story. I missed it. True for many people, by the way, not just him. But he says there was a cover-up at News International um, in 2005, 2006. He basically blames the media organisation as well as himself. And this gives us a taste of what we're going to be in for for coming weeks, months, perhaps even years, as there's going to be trials inquiries this story is not going to go away it's going to be with us for a hell of a long time and it's going to claim the careers of many more people I mean Yates here he basically he did the cash for honors inquiry and he, you know he did that pretty well but this he did appallingly badly and he's admitting that to I me mean, how could all these huge amounts of hacked yeah. emails pass his attention. A lot of questions there for the police as well. Let's do some other stories because there is a lot else in the <laughs> going, is, going on in the world. There is. I mean, as, as you were talking about uh, earlier, this terrible um, drought, it's incredible, isn't it, that we've now the famine and the drought, uh, we've now raised all that money. I mean, oddly six enough, million so six far, million quickly, pounds and, yeah. and um, it is absolutely terrible. The pictures here in the Sunday Mirror, you know, I just think you see that picture and you just reach for your checkbook. Mm. Uh, you've got a story about another guest who's coming on later on, Chris Hune. Yes, the Mail on Sunday has revealed here, they say, they say that the police confiscated his son's mobile phone. Of course, that's what you do nowadays when you investigate, you take the, <laughs> take you take the mobile and the Blackberry. And they found a text um, from Chris Hune. Um, basically, uh, his son said, please, Dad, come clean. And according to the Mail on Sunday, Chris Hune said, well, you wouldn't want your mum to end up in Holloway Prison, would you? The implication being that if she did take the points, she was as guilty as he was in the crime mm -hmm. and she could... So it's very interesting and it shows the pressure piling on him even more. Another story which isn't going away. But right. there's a little bit of to good news at the end of that story is that the, the divorce is um, in, in the courts and he's now free to marry again. So he might. Who knows? And 
everyone's been talking about Harry Potter all week and, and mourning the last of the movies, but it is not over. It's just beginning. According to the uh, Sunday Telegraph, that brand alone is now worth £9 billion, just the brand. And they want to turn it into like the next Mickey Mouse and have it all over the world and, you know, even on jelly beans. Well, I can hardly wait. And the Royals, they've been, um, you know, the tour of, incredibly successful tour of Canada. It has which, been, hasn't yeah. it? It's been um, and it's just, the, the pictures here, this is, you know, a great example mm. of what great value we get from the monarchy. We are brilliant representatives for Britain. And Canada's going crazy. And um, it's just, it seems that Kate Middleton is becoming, you know, a fashion icon, a style icon, every much as, uh, a bit as, as um, Lady Diana. And it's kind of funny because we all, we didn't really expect her to, take on that trajectory. I know. But, but she is. She is. She's been incredible. But yeah. it also, um, William has had a fantastic tour. And, you know, he's been able to get out and play polo and land helicopters and things like that. But he, even in his walkabouts, there is something of Diana about mm. him because he was talking yesterday with some children who'd lost their mother about how every day of his life he, he mm. mourns his mother and misses her. And he's got kind of humanity about him that Charles never was able to mm. display, mm. Which, is, which is really working very well. Mm. A final story, very good news. Uh, a, a good news story for Andrew Mark. Oh, this is a, yes, uh, we had to get you a nice one. Um, Botox. Yes, this is this plea to get Botox on the NHS. And it's not for um, cosmetic reasons, but we could get rid of those little wrinkles and you things. Could, yeah, those sure. little worry lines with the yeah. weight of the world on your shoulders uh, yeah, yeah, or yeah, on yeah. your brow. All right, enough of that. I think, we've, I think we've certainly run out of time on this newspaper. Thank you both very much indeed. Uh, the weather forecasters as well seem to be getting a bit of a stick in the press at the moment. People are complaining about sort of gratuitous ad libs. So here is Liam Dutton, who will not mention sun cream, barbecues, umbrellas or any sporting events. Can it be done? Over to you, Liam.